The geisha has become one of the most iconic representations of Japan and Japanese culture, but not many people know much about them besides what they've seen in movies. There may even be some people who think that geishas are prostitutes. Today, I'll share with you what geisha, maiko, and oirans are and clear up some misconceptions. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Geishas are not prostitutes. The word geisha consists of two Japanese characters, gay and mono, which are translated to arts and person respectively. Like what their title implies, geishas are artists hired to dance and perform at dinners, banquets and parties, as well as engage with their clients in conversations, pour their drinks and to play games with them. They're also trained in poetry, literature and calligraphy. Then there's Michael, a geisha's apprentice. They're usually tied to one geisha who acts as their mentor or older sister. Michaels will attend the same events as their older sisters and learn on the job. After a few years, a Michael will graduate into a geisha when she's deemed skillful enough. Since Michaels are just apprentices, they cannot command the same pay as geishas do. In Tokyo, they're even called half jewels or hangyoku in Japanese to indicate that they only get half of what a geisha makes. The misconception that geisha and Michaels are prostitutes probably originated in the 1940s after World War II. During the US occupation of Japan, a number of Japanese prostitutes wore kimonos, painted their faces white like geishas, and they claimed to be geishas so they could attract American soldiers. The real prostitutes were oirans. Like geishas, oirans were sophisticated, beautiful, and talented in the arts, not just some street hookers standing in the street corners. Oirans were considered a rare commodity and extremely expensive. An average man in the Edo period has to pay an entire year of savings to spend one night with an oiran. They were so sought after that they could even pick and choose their own clients. When prostitutes were outlawed in Japan in 1957, oirans died out and you can now only find them on stage or in Japanese festivals. Okay, let's talk about the appearances. As we all know, geishas and maiko wear kimono. However, the type of kimono they wear would depend on their rank. A geisha wears simpler, lighter kimonos, usually in darker shades like navy blue or moss green. A maiko wears brighter and more vibrant kimonos in colors like red or pink, and their kimonos will most likely have more elaborate art on it. This makes the maiko look younger and cuter, as opposed to the geisha whose kimono will make her look more mature and elegant. The trademark of a geisha and a maiko is perhaps their makeup, the white face and the red lips. Like with the kimonos, geishas and maikos have different makeup styles. While the face remains white, their lips are painted differently. A maiko will usually only paint her lower lip, while a geisha would paint both lips. As a geisha gets older, she may choose to stop using the white makeup to look more natural and mature. As for hairstyles, a geisha's and maiko's hair will always be perfectly coiled, brushed, and tied, never a strand out of place. While Michaels must always style her own natural hair, geishas are allowed to wear wigs, which are easier and healthier alternatives. Like with kimonos, Michaels have heavier and more outstanding hair accessories, while geisha will have subtle and lighter hair accessories. You may have noticed by now that geishas, compared to Michael, have an easier time when it comes to their appearances. They are allowed to go without the white makeup, the extensive hair procedures, they wear kimonos and hair accessories that are lighter and easier to put on, they even wear more comfortable shoes. This is probably because they already paid their dues as Michael, so now they're allowed a little bit more leeway. Some people may look at orans and think that they're geishas because orans also have white makeup and wear kimono. But if you know what to look for, you can easily tell them apart. Overall, orans look more outstanding than geishas. They would walk down the streets at night to advertise themselves, so everything about their appearance is for the purpose of gaining as much attention as possible. For example, orans wore far more elaborate kimonos than geishas or maikos, some with as many as five or seven layers. These layers could weigh up to 30 kilograms in total. But the most obvious difference is in the obi, which is the sash that keeps the kimono together. Geishas tie their obi and have the bow in the back, while orans would have the bow at the front of them, making it easier for clients to untie the obi and undress them. While geishas and maiko's hair ornaments are usually silver or the color of flowers, orans' hair ornaments are usually gold to attract more attention to themselves, and they were gigantic in comparison. Their hair ornaments were so large that it had to be fitted on a wig because the orans' natural hair wouldn't have enough volume to hold all of it. The wig and the hair ornaments together could weigh up to 10 kilograms. Oran's shoes were also much taller, some as tall as 20 centimeters, that would put them high above the crowd as they parade down the streets, getting more onlookers and potential clients. 
Unlike other Japanese traditions or traits that have undergone various changes along with modernization and globalization, geishas have remained largely untouched by external influences. While there no doubt has been some changes, the geisha's world today is still remarkably similar to the one of the Edo period. Unfortunately, geisha's numbers are shrinking and they might one day die out. But just as samurai and oirans did, geisha's are sure to live on in books, photos, and media to forever remain a source of cultural pride for Japan. Let us know in the comment section down below what's the one thing interesting that you found out about Geisha, Michael, and Oran today. If you learned something new in this video today, don't forget to give us a like. We have similar videos about Japanese culture and all about Japan coming up soon, so don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification. See you next week.